This video is about the natural projection function on a group G and what it can tell us about the relationship between kernels and group homomorphisms. Our goals for this video are to understand the relationship between the normal subgroups of a group G and the possible group homomorphisms on G. We will also work a few examples and provide several concept checks. We are assuming familiarity with the first isomorphism theorem for groups. We will use the following notational conventions for n is a subgroup of G, n is a normal subgroup of G. For an integer n greater than or equal to 2, Zn will denote the additive group of integers modulo n, with elements a sometimes denoted with brackets for additional clarity if necessary. Dn will denote the dihedral group of order 2n, with a rotational element a of order n, and a flip element b of order 2. First, let's define the natural projection function. Let g be a group and let k be a subgroup of g. The function rho from g to the set of left cosets g mod k, given by x getting sent to xk for each x in g, is called the natural projection, or sometimes the canonical projection, from g to g mod k. A useful proposition is that if k is a normal subgroup of g, then the natural projection function is a surjective group homomorphism whose kernel is k. Proof? If k is normal in g, then g mod k is a group with operation defined by xk yk equals xyk for all x and y in g. And therefore, rho of xy is equal to xyk, which is xk yk, which is equal to rho of x times rho of y. You can easily check that rho is surjective. And if you just follow the definition of the kernel, the kernel of rho is the set of all x's in G such that xk equals k. In other words, such that rho of x is equal to the identity in G mod k, which is precisely the elements of k. Okay, so we come to our main result that we want to talk about in this video. Let G be a group. If H is a group and phi is a homomorphism from G to H, then the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of G. That's an elementary result. Perhaps more surprising, if K is any normal subgroup of G, then there is a group H and a homomorphism phi from G to H whose kernel is K. It would be a good idea for you to pause and practice the proof to part one of this theorem. Okay, so here's a review of that proof. First, show that the kernel of phi is a subgroup of G. It's easy to check that the kernel is non-empty because the identity element is always an element of the kernel. And that anytime you pick two elements, J and K in the kernel, that J K inverse is also in the kernel. Thus it remains to show that the kernel of phi is normal in G. Well, let x be an element of G and let k be an element of the kernel of phi. We need to conjugate k by x and make sure that we wind up back in the kernel. Well, how do you show that an element is in the kernel? You take phi of it and you make sure that you get the identity element of h. So phi of x, k, x inverse by the properties of homomorphisms is phi of x times phi of k times phi of x inverse. But phi of k is equal to the identity because k belongs to the kernel. And therefore we wind up with phi of x times phi of x inverse, which is the identity on h. And therefore, xk x inverse belongs to the kernel of phi. 
So the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of G. For part two, given our previous proposition, this is easy to prove actually. Consider H to be the quotient group G mod K and let phi be equal to the natural projection function rho. Then the previous proposition tells us that rho is a surjective group homomorphism from G to G mod K, whose kernel is K. One caution here, the theorem does not imply uniqueness. That is, given a normal subgroup K of G, there may be more than one homomorphism on G with kernel K, even up to isomorphism. For example, consider the group G equals Z5 and K the trivial group. Note that Z5 mod the trivial group is just isomorphic to Z5. There are actually two homomorphisms from Z5 to Z5 with trivial kernel, one of them being the identity function and the other being the one that takes a to 5 minus a for each a in z5. And you can double check that both of these are well-defined group homomorphisms with trivial kernel. As it turns out, the identity function is the one that is induced by the natural projection function. So a more general remark, any group with order at least two has at least two normal subgroups, namely itself and the trivial subgroup. If you mod out G by the trivial subgroup, you get a group that's isomorphic to the original group, and then the natural projection function is going to induce the identity function on G with trivial kernel. On the other hand, G mod G is isomorphic to the trivial group, and then the natural projection will induce the trivial function from G to the trivial group, whose kernel is the entire group. Now, what do we mean by induces? What we really mean is, for example, the identity function is going to be sigma of rho, where sigma is the isomorphism that takes G mod the trivial group to the group G via this function, the coset A trivial group getting sent to A. So in general, given a normal subgroup K of G and an, an isomorphism sigma from G mod K to a group H, the natural projection rho from G to G mod K induces a surjective homomorphism phi defined by sigma of rho whose kernel is k. This diagram is a nice way of remembering this relationship. It's called a commutative diagram because following the arrow this way produces the same function as following the arrows this way. And either way the kernel will be k so it doesn't matter whether we follow these arrows or, or phi directly. And just a note here that the first isomorphism theorem actually says the converse of this remark. Recall that it says that given a surjective homomorphism phi from G to H, there is an isomorphism sigma from G mod K to H, where K is the kernel of phi. And in fact, phi will then be equal to sigma of rho, where rho is the natural projection function. So here's another example. Let G be the group Z12, and let K be the subgroup generated by 3. Of course, this is a normal subgroup because Z12 is abelian, so all its subgroups are normal. Since g is of order 12 and k is of order 4, g mod k is of order 3. So it must be isomorphic to z3. And in fact, we can give a specific isomorphism, 
take the coset A plus K and send it to A. Now just to clarify this notation, this A comes from Z12. So this is a congruence class mod 12, and we are sending this A plus K to an element in Z3. So really this is, this A is a congruence class mod 3. So it's worth checking that this is a well-defined group isomorphism. As always, you should pause the video and convince yourself of these details before going on. Then the natural projection induces phi from Z12 to Z3, which sends A to A. Again, this is A in Z12 getting sent to A in Z3. And you should convince yourself that the kernel of phi is actually equal to k. A little bit more detail here in case you need it. So phi, remember, is sigma after rho. So rho takes A to the coset A plus k. And then sigma sends A plus k over to A. So the composition ends up taking the class of A mod 12 to the class of A mod 3. Here we come to our first concept check. Pause and explore. I urge you to pause the video and work out a solution for yourself before going on. Let G be Z6. Find all interesting homomorphisms on Z6 induced by natural projections. Now by interesting, I mean the non-identity, non-trivial homomorphisms. We saw before that all groups have themselves and the trivial group as subgroups, which in turn induce the homomorphisms of the identity function and the trivial function respectively. But the task is to find all the other homomorphisms on Z6 that are induced by natural projections. So pause the video and come back when you're ready. The proper non-trivial normal subgroups of Z6 are these. I'll call the first one K1. That's the subgroup generated by 2, consisting of 0, 2, and 4. And K2, the subgroup generated by 3, consisting of 0 and 3. Starting with K1, Z6 mod K1 is isomorphic to Z2 via the isomorphism that takes A plus K1 to A. And again, I've put the brackets in to clarify what group each element belongs to. And then phi1 will be the homomorphism that goes from Z6 to Z2 via row one, which is the natural projection function from Z6 to the quotient group Z6 mod K1. And then sigma one as above is the isomorphism that goes from Z6 mod K1 to Z2. And if you chase that through, you'll find that the element A in Z6 gets sent to the class of A in Z2. And here's a picture of the situation. Here are the elements of Z6. The elements of K1, 0, 2, and 4, under the natural projection function, are going to get sent to the identity element of Z6 mod K1, namely the coset K1. And then sigma1 is going to send that element to the identity element of Z2, namely 0. And then the other three elements of Z6, 1, 3, and 5, are going to get sent to the other coset, 1 plus K1, which in turn gets sent to the other element of Z2. For the other subgroup, Z6 mod K2 is isomorphic to Z3, and we have an isomorphism sigma2 
that will do that. Then phi2 will take z6 to z3 by sending the class of A in z6 to the class of A in z3. And here's the diagram that shows what these functions are doing. The elements of k2, 0, and 3 get sent to the identity element k2 in the quotient group, which gets sent to the identity element of z3. 1 and 4 get sent to 1 plus k2, which gets sent to the element 1. And 2 and 5 get sent to 2 plus k2, which then gets sent to 2. Here's our other concept check, a non-abelian example this time. Let G be the dihedral group of order 8, D4. Consider the normal subgroup K consisting of E and A squared. By the way, this subgroup is the center of D4, so it is definitely a normal subgroup. The task is to find a group H and a homomorphism phi from d4 to h such that the kernel of phi is equal to k. So pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay, so note that we do not have uniqueness here, so there are actually several possible answers. Now the canonical solution is, well, just take h equal the quotient group d4 mod k and take phi equal to the natural projection, rho. By our previous results, this answers the question. But maybe we can have a little bit more of an illuminating solution by talking about an induced homomorphism on a more familiar group. What is this group d4 mod k up to isomorphism? Well, k has index 4 in d4, and in fact, d4 mod k consists of the following four left cosets, k, a k, b k, and a b k. And you can see here that I have sliced up d4 into these four left cosets. You can investigate the structure of this group of order four by noting that all of these non-identity cosets have order two, and therefore, d4 mod k is isomorphic to the Klein 4 group, c2 cross c2. So let h be equal to z2 cross c2, and let sigma from d4 mod k to h be defined as follows. k, the identity element of the quotient group, should get sent to the identity element of z2 cross c2, and then if you send a k to 1, 0, b k to 0, 1, and a b k to 1, 1, you can check that sigma is an isomorphism. And then we can let phi from d4 to h be given by sigma of rho, where rho is the natural projection function. Then by our previous results and remarks, we know that the kernel of phi is precisely k, but we can double check it by hand. The kernel of phi is the set of all elements x in d4, such that phi of x equals the identity element in z2 cross z2, namely 0, 0. That's the set of all x's such that rho of x is equal to k, which you can check are precisely the elements e and a squared, namely the set k. So to summarize, given a group g, for every homomorphism phi on g, there is a normal subgroup k of g, such that the kernel of phi is equal to k, for every normal subgroup k of g, there is a group homomorphism phi from g to g mod k, whose kernel is k, namely 
the natural projection function. And further, if sigma is an isomorphism from g mod k to h, then sigma of rho is a group homomorphism whose kernel is k. I hope you found this video helpful.